Townies, the boy from suburban Perth, who tonight is an interim world boxing champion. Two years ago, Danny Green was an amateur, but tonight he's the toast of the boxing world after a stunning display in Canada. The 30-year-old is now one win away from being crowned the undisputed world champion. They throw him a they have that The is fight is over in the sixth round. round. This was it's Danny Green's day. Danny the boy from Doubleview effectively crowned the super middleweight champion of the world. Look at the jaw on the face of Jeff Fennick, his first world champion. I reckon uh, that I'm going to have the best Christmas of, of my life with my little daughter Chloe. It's something that I worked hard for to just bring home to her. In a ruthless display, Green took just six rounds to win the fight. The beating so bruising, Canadian Eric Luca called it quits. And the crowd of Canada pumped us up so much. When we were standing there, the whole crowd was just going mad at us, screaming, spitting, yelling, throwing. And that made us excited. We were pumped. You know, we don't care. We only got one person to fight in the ring. And, and unbeknownst to them, the Canadians actually helped me about 15%, so thank you, boys. Back in Perth at a packed Greenwood Hotel, Green's mother and younger sister were stunned. Their boy is one step away from becoming WA's first boxing world champion. <laughs> The moment also special for Green's first coach. I'm over the moon today. <laughs> Four months ago, Green's first world title bout ended in a farce when he was disqualified for headbutting Marcus Bayer. No such controversy today as Green completed the rise from the amateur ranks to the world's best. Don't think we've seen the best of Danny Green yet. Don't think we've seen the best. Danny's still learning. To become the undisputed world champion, Danny Green must now go to Germany for a rematch with Marcus Bayer. That fight will be on February the 28th. The celebrations will continue when Green returns home to Perth on Boxing Day. And joining me on the line now from secondsout.com is boxing expert Paul Upham. And Paul, a very polished performance from Danny Green, a very mature performance from the new world champion, or interim world champion. Yes, Murray, it's a great day for Australian boxing and a great day for Danny Green. He, his performance today was outstanding. It was even better than what he did in Germany against Marcus Bayer. Eric Lucas on paper was going to be always going to be a top uh, opposition. And the first two rounds, Danny Green, he really followed the game plan set down by Jeff Fennick. He soaked up the best punches. And then Jeff uh, Fennick let him loose. And uh, Danny Green just took control of the fight. And uh, his performance sent uh, you know, a message to the world that he is one of the best in the world in the super middleweight division. Yeah, there was a lot written during the week about the fact that he came out like a bull out of a gate in the Bayer fight, but he really obviously did learn a lot from that because, as you said, he started slowly, bided his time, and then unleashed. He just showed his maturity. Uh, he's worked so hard, realising you know, what he lost in, in, in Germany, not kept coming home with a world title. And with Jeff Fennick, you had tremendous experience in the corner. You know, he's an even better fighter now, and, and the power he showed w was unbelievable, but he also showed us he's got tremendous boxing skills, the composure he showed, the control. He didn't lose, he didn't lose patience he, when he maybe was behind on, in the first two rounds. And, you know, he soaked up all Eric Lucas throw, could throw at him. And then he came back and he just destroyed Eric Lucas to the point where when Lucas went down in the sixth round, uh, he nodded over to his corner and asked him to throw the towel and he didn't want to go on with Danny Green. Yeah, and he's done so well to put what happened earlier in the year behind him. Obviously, he was so disappointed with the headbutt and the Bayer fight that he's put that behind him and, and, uh, and moved on to a, certainly another level. I think mentally he's very strong. He, he, he realised what happened in Germany, uh, you know, whether rightly or wrongly he was disqualified. And you know, he understood that this, he, this was his second chance and he had to make the most of it. And you know, to watch him training down at the Team Fennick Gym at Maryville, you could see he was giving absolutely 100% in his training sessions. And you know, Jeff Fennick said before the fight, he knows that he's got a better fighter on his hands now. And uh, you know, I, don't, I think there's no doubt that uh, he will beat Marcus Bayer if they, the fight does go ahead. It's meant to happen on February 28 now. If I was Marcus Bale, I wouldn't want to get in the ring with Danny Green after what he did today. And I think Danny Green can call himself the true WBC world champion. Before we look at the possibility of a Mundine versus Green fight, this has uh, done enormous things for Australian boxing, hasn't it? Oh, it's a tremendous boost for the sport here. You know, of course, we've always had Costa Zoo and uh, Anthony Mundine winning the WBA title. And, you know, Danny Green's got the WBC title now. And, of course, uh, you know, the rivalry between Mundine and Green, it's, it's, it's going to be the talking point of... Uh, of mainstream sport now uh, over the next few months and uh, 
you know, but to, to lift the sport up, we need world champions. And, you know, what Danny Green's done, he's not only put himself on the map, but he's put Australian boxing right up there as, you know, a real competitive country along, you know, with the Americans, the English and the, the Germans and the Mexicans. Well, Fennec hinted at the possibility of a, of a mundane green match in the post-bout press conference, but is it a possibility? Will we ever see these two get together? I think eventually if they keep winning, it will happen. Uh, Mundine's got a fight coming up with the Japanese boxer Nishizawa on January 19. And of, and of course, he'd like to finish business with the German Sven Oki. Green's got a fight Marcus Bayer on February, February 28. If they both were to continue uh, you know, without losing, I, I think uh, this time next year, um, I, I think the fight is a genuine reality. Um, because once they reach the top of the world... Uh, it's not just Australian versus Australian. It's, it's, it's two of the best in the world to determine who, who is the undisputed champion at super middleweight. And obviously, fights aren't one on paper. They're one in the ring. But uh, if you looked at the, the bout now, a possibility of a Green versus Mundine fight, how would you see that going? Well, really, Murray, it's like, it's like Ford versus Holden. Yeah. You're going to have many, many Green fans and many Mundine fans. I think Danny Green showed today that he's not just a hitter. Uh, people thought he was a little bit one-dimensional, but his boxing skills today were excellent. There's no doubt Mundine's got excellent uh, boxing skills. He's got the speed, the movement. You know, at this point in time, I don't know who's going to win. I think that's what makes it such a great fight. I can make a case for Danny Green to win. I can make a case for Anthony Mundine to win. I'd like to see them, uh, how they go in their next couple of fights and uh, maybe make a pick. I don't like sitting on the front fence, but make a pick a little bit close when the fight's made. But, you know, I just think it's a tremendous matchup and it, it would be the biggest fight in Australian boxing history. Absolutely. And finally, a word, Paul, on uh, Green's trainer, Jeff Finnick, because he's certainly had his critics in some in some uh, some areas from, of boxing, but he certainly answered them now. Well, no, he's a three-time world champion in the boxing ring. He's, he's now a trainer of a world champion. Uh, he, he has had his critics, but I think he's, he's taken Danny Green from the Olympics uh, throughout his whole professional career, and I just think he showed today that, you know, Jeff Fennick is a world-class trainer, and he's been doing a lot of good things with Team Fennick, and, you know, a lot of credit's got to go to Jeff Fennick and also to his assistant trainer, Billy Hussain, as well, who's, who's done a lot of work with... Uh, with Danny Green and you know we saw the result Danny Green one of the best in the world Paul Upham from secondsout.com thanks a lot for your time tonight and thanks for your insight